Hello everybody. In the first part or the previous part of this video, I was talking about the six essentials towards prosperity. And in the last video, I mentioned the term dollar slave, which I guess you could say is a currency slave because Japanese people, well, they trade yens, not dollars. And in UK, it's pounds and euros and all these other fancy names. So overall, yeah, a currency slave situation, debt slave, same sort of deal, wage slave, once again, same sort of deal. And I'm not saying this to be harsh in any way, but to go through what reality really is. Because if you don't like hearing the fact that we are dollar slaves, well, I guess it's time to get mad and it's time to do something about it. And when I say mad, no, you don't have to get mad, but... At least, if you're ready to say, I, I, I don't want to take this anymore, and you want to do something about it, then uh, by all means, this is the time in which it could be done. I'm not going to say what to write to a congressman or what to say to them over the phone, because I would have no idea what to tell you to say. And therefore, I'm just going to keep on educating what I've already been figuring out. And in this, vis this video, it is the resource-based economy. Now, as far as slavery is concerned, the definition of slavery that I'm looking at right now is a civil relationship whereby one person has absolute power over another and controls his life, liberty, and fortune. So who's that one person? Is that one person a collective government form of financial control, the ones that regulate the financial system? Is it safe to say that we are currently controlled by the current monetary system that we are living in right now? When you look around and see how people are reacting to, to currencies, it seems very obvious that that is the case. And another easy way of looking at slavery is you're forced into doing something and you got no choice. And that, that's the way the currency system lives. To get any of the six essentials, anything to have within your life, whether it's a necessity item or a non-necessity item, then it's going to take uh, fiat money to be able to make it work. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the resource-based economy. If you are not familiar with it, you want to know more information, I'll be going over little bits and pieces within this series, and I'd highly recommend to do some research. This came from the Zeitgeist Project. They call it the Venus Project, which is uh, mainly taught by Jacques Fresco and Peter Joseph, who run the uh, Zeitgeist movies. And in here in the circle, I got resources slash raw materials. And there are so many to count. You got like the silver, any type of metal, silver, copper, palladium, maybe even gold any type of food industries, whether it's uh, oranges, whether it's corn, whether it's peaches. There's thousands and thousands of different resources. And what I said in the previous video is it's like changing colors. You had a little bit of blue and green and whatever to make different colors. You had a little bit of cotton, you had a bit of sugar, you had a bit, but a bit of yada yada yada, you had a bunch of different stuff and we make awesome different products. And with the technology aspect, this is the big deal because currently technology has been taking all of, all of our jobs. Some might see it as a bad thing. Oh, they've, took, they've taken our jobs. We're now poor. A lot of people are poor because of it. And a lot of the jobs that they've been taking are the mundane jobs that no one was liking to begin with anyway, or not many were liking. And when we combine technology within our resources, raw materials, within industry, that in a same level that could effectively increase production to levels that we have never even seen, even if there was a lower amount of people on this planet, because we can take 20, 30 different robots or pieces of technology that can do the work that 300 humans would not be able to do. We're still going to need humans to do work along the way, but we're at the point now where technology can do a lot. So we take these industry products that we make and then you ship them off to warehouses all across the world which would be ready for distribution. If we 
use a resource-based economy and using same methods, same forecasting, then it really would not be that difficult to ensure that the majority of the population are able to get as much of the six essentials as they possibly can if you have one person who is farming makes enough food for 40 people takes the food uses technology within the industry to uh, effectively crop the food effectively plant the food and then sends that food towards a warehouse where then it would be distributed the evenly I've had some people mention, well, what about the lazy people in a resource-based economy? You know what? It's not fair that the hard-working people gets to have their eggs and potatoes, and the person who's lazy also gets his eggs and potatoes. And my answer to that question is a few different small answers. One, well, what about the lazy people today? We, we have a lot of people in that vote right now. And secondly... If somebody chooses to want to be lazy, part of a resource-based economy is allowing the freedom to come in or the reduction of the slavery. This way, if somebody wants to be lazy, we'll, we'll just let them because it's almost uh, like that little child, a 10, we'll say 10, 12 year old child who wants to help out a little bit as there's a big project going on, maybe house renovations. But there really isn't much that person can do. So they say, well, if you want to just pick up the leaves here or just throw this in the trash, go right ahead. There really isn't much for you. That seems to be the case to where we're going because of technology. If technology is able to eliminate the majority of these tedious jobs, then essentially... What that means is it could be like work three hours a day, work 15 hours a week, and the rest of the time is yours to do what it is you came here to do within this planet. And moving towards a resource-based economy, this, this is a radical change that we have now. Realistically speaking, it's going to take a lot of transition to get towards something like this. And you, you, we need to collapse the current system that we are in now. I've talked a lot about the Mayan calendar on this channel before. And by looking at the information that is within it, I can't say, well, within this time period it's going to happen. Because it could happen as early as four or five years from now. It could take 50 years. It could take a couple hundred. But this sort of economy is the one that is... Uh, moving forward to that of a positive word, world because currently the currency system we have now there's too much stress going on with people who are trying to live day by day trying to pay their bills and then of course the debt system makes it that much more difficult oh I'm short on finances you go to the bank and you borrow five thousand dollars on a line of credit now over the next so many years, you got another extra 1,000 fiat dollars you're going to have to pay on interest payments or you rack up your credit card that's over 20% interest and while well, everybody is in massive debt causing a lot of stress in the world, you got people who, uh, oh, I'm just going to end uh, that, end it at that section right there. I uh, don't know what version 1.4 is going to be. I may talk a little bit more about the resource-based economy again before jumping into the main aspects, the reason why I covered the six essentials, the six prosperity essentials in the resource-based economy to start this off is because there will be multiple times when I'm going to refer back to the RBE, which is the resource-based economy and that of the six essentials. Thank you for watching and have yourself a great day.